Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the North Juanita. We're glad that you're with us this evening. We're always happy for people like you that are interested in what's happening in the cities and CCX's viewing area. It is important for good government that there be a flow of information back and forth from the mayors, the people that work in the city, the city council members, and you, the residents. So we're glad that you're interested in wanting to find out more about what's happening in our cities. We are now in election season, as I'm sure you can tell just by turning on your television. And we want to keep you and give you some information about the people that are running in our cities and for both for city council and for mayor, give you a little information so that you can be an informed voter when November 6th runs around. We will put up the phone number and the email for each of the candidates that are with us tonight. And we've got several candidate shows we'll be doing during this time. And if it's your city, be sure to write that down because if any of the issues kind of resonate with you and they're important to you, we encourage you to get in contact with the people that are running for office and give them your ideas and share their ideas. And we're very happy tonight to welcome people. First, we've got George Selman, who's from Ward Three. Three in Robbinsdale. Dan Brown, who's running at large in Plymouth. And Antonia West Hafner, who's from the Central District. Yes. And we are going to be talking with each of them one at a time. And we'll, like I said, go over many different issues. First, we're going to start with George. And I'm going to let George introduce himself to those of you out there. People from Robbinsdale probably know quite a bit about him. But there's more people out there that probably want to know who you are and kind of your role in the city and what got you to where you're at on okay. this council. Very good. And, and thank you for doing this. Before I say anything, Juanita, this is a great benefit to the, all of our communities. Uh, my name is George Selman. I'm uh, running for the third ward in, in Robbinsdale, and I'm just finishing up my third term. Uh -huh. And I uh, have been uh, on the council for, for nearly 12 years, but I've been working hard in the city of Robbinsdale for over 30 years oh, yeah. on, a, on a variety of committees and uh, commissions uh -huh. and things like that. And the the work that I've enjoyed being a part of is not done. There's there's ah. still lots of work to done, and we've got a lot of exciting things happening in Robbinsdale. Oh, you do? You bet. And we, uh, um, I, I look forward to another four years of working on those things and seeing them through, and I'll share more about that later on. Uh, I'm a 30-year, uh, excuse me, 40-year resident of Robbinsdale. Oh, and you've seen a lot of change over I the have years, seen then. a lot of change, uh, mostly my gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, um, our daughters uh, both live in, their, in Robbinsdale uh -huh. with their husbands and their children. And so I've got three generations uh, that actually live wow. on the same city block wow. um, that, uh, that I'm working for besides just the rest of the, the citizens of Robbinsdale. Right, right. So it's, it's more than casually important to me. They, li they both live in the city, too. Exactly, that, they do. That, that's kind of cool. It's a lot of people that I hear about. If they don't, yeah. that, that, <laughs> that if things aren't going right, they let me know. Um, and I think the b biggest thing that I'd like people to remember is the experience I bring uh -huh. um, of serving on, uh, chairing the Planning Commission for 10 uh -huh. years, serving on the Park, Rec, and Forestry Commission, you know, and then being in different service organizations like the JCs right. and the Lions. You know, these things uh, really position me very well mm -hmm. to, to maximize the immense amount of time that I spend on right. council activities. Right. Yeah, that's one thing people should know is it does take a bit of time. So you got to be interested in it and be willing to put that time in, right? Absolutely. And then I asked, gave a number of, of areas that you might want to talk about. Uh, from the Blue Line extension that's going on, economic development projects, housing projects that might have been completed, any special issues your city is facing, values that are important to, for the future of Robbinsdale. How has Robbinsdale used the tax increment financing and what do you think about it? Uh, uh, one that keeps coming up with a lot of time is increased communications between citizens and city councils. And how would you maintain a balance between city services and tax increases and those pe people have been thinking about all those areas so I'll let you pick ones that you'd like to let's start out with your first one and won't necessarily be a talk we're just going to go over 
Well, the my ones first, that are important. My first one is the first one on your list. Okay. And that's the light rail transit ah. coming coming to Robbinsdale and the, the entire Northwest Corridor right. along Botanical Boulevard and 55. Uh, I've served on uh, the Community Advisory Committee for this project mm -hmm. for, uh, I'm in my 16th year. Ooh. <laughs> when, when Commissioner Olpat asked me to to serve uh -huh. on this, he said 24 to 36 months. Uh -huh. And so I, I get to tease him about that every yeah. once in a while as those anniversaries click right. by. But, uh, you know, I've been studying transit because of that for, oh, for sure. 16 years, and I became part of that when I was on the Planning Commission. And I've had a lot of, uh, as a result of that, a lot of education about transit uh -huh. and the benefits of it and how to do it right and the transit-oriented development that can come with this type of a project uh -huh. to all the communities where their stations are. Right. And it's, uh, it's, it's invaluable. I've been to several conventions related to transit uh, three already, and I'm going to a fourth oh, one uh, next week in the middle of campaign season uh, because I, I feel it's that important. Oh, right, right. It's, these are hundred years decisions that, that we're making for these definitely uh, these station areas and the, learning as much as you can about the uh, transit-oriented development and traffic patterns and how to maximize the, the benefit mm -hmm. of having this come to your town is probably the most important thing that our city will face in the next uh, uh, Four years. Oh, I bet. And is there anything that you particularly want to see happen for the next stage, or? Well, I'd like the railroad to come to okay, the table and okay. talk to us. That's probably the that's that's currently right, the holdup. Right. Um, and there's there's a lot of work being done to get the railroad to do that. And once that happens, we'll uh, we'll be able to move forward, much as mm -hmm. the Southwest Line has. They were quite a ways ahead of us, but they had right. some delays, and we kind of caught up. And now. Right. Now we're waiting for the railroad to be ready to talk, and once that happens, we can uh, we, we can resume our our regular planning and development. But you know, adding a Robbinsdale is a small town. Right. Adding a 450 car parking ramp mm -hmm. uh, in the, in our in our adjacent to our down, right. downtown is is not a minor decision. No. <laughs> and we have we have literally put hundreds and hundreds of hours into mm -hmm. studying this and and maximizing it and make it work first for the city of Robbinsdale. And then second for, second and third are basically tied. This, the developer and the the bus transit that right. has to connect to it. Uh, that's the one thing we've learned is the the bus can't be first ah. yeah, because this you know developers aren't looking to build housing right. on top of a bus stop. Right. They they need to uh, they, we need to have it work in concert, but it's got to work for everybody or it's not going to work at right. all. Right. And then do you have another issue you'd like to share with our audience? I think the the other. A uh, big burning issue in Robbinsdale is development. We've mm -hmm. had a lot, and we're we're an older community that we're 100 percent built out. And our economic economic development authority that I am currently president uh -huh. of, uh, we have uh, had some major uh, developments that are really big victories. And it and it started several years ago when Well Let's Bakery decided to move to uh -huh. Robbinsdale, and that oh. was kind of our first domino yeah. of really getting somebody that had a recognizable brand name that, but wasn't a franchise. Right. And uh, you know they came to town and they, they wanted to open a store but just black out the windows and have it be their commercial bakery. And we <laughs> said, well, we're helping finance this, so you need to have a bakery. Yeah. And they agreed to it, and it's one of their best performing oh, stores. Cool. And, and because of that, other things have come. Uh -huh. You know, we've got uh, a new brewery in town that's, that's wildly popular, Wicked Wart. Uh, uh, Travail, is, ah, uh, those guys yes, are nationally yes. known for their restaurant. Right. And we have people something that Robbinsdale hasn't had in a long time, we've got a parking problem. Uh -huh. yeah, so that's kind of a nice <laughs> right. problem to have from, right. a, from a business development perspective. Right. And, uh, you know, and Travail's now building a new building, right. investing millions of dollars and mm -hmm. reinvesting mm -hmm. millions of dollars into Robbinsdale. And the, uh, probably the biggest development project we've had that I'm the most proud of um, is the bringing High V to Robbinsdale. Ah, yes. And, and that, was a, that was a tough process. Oh, I right. mean, the Terrace Theater was was beloved by many people, including myself. Uh, it was, it, but it had been empty for 17 years with boarded up right. windows, and there was no real definitive plan of what to do with it or how to finance it from the people that wanted to save it. And I admired their passion, but at the end of the day, you know, we have to do what's best for the right. citizens of Robbinsdale. And now I'd like you to take some time to tell the people out in Robbinsdale in your ward why should they vote for you when they go in the voting booth on November 6th? Well, I, I think the biggest thing I, I, I bring to the table, as I mentioned earlier, is, is my experience. 
Robbinsdale's invested a lot into me in uh, um, education and, ex and that experience that will really allow me to uh, continue to provide the, the level of service that I have, not just the people of the Third Ward, but when we're up there voting, we vote for everybody in the city. And the one thing I've always done is I've always voted for what the people I represent want, not necessarily what I want. The uh, experience of you know, asking people about issues and getting that information so we can have it um, be, be a reflection of what the citizens want is the best way I feel government and city councils can function. Well, thank you very much. Now we'll move on to Dan Brown, who's running at large in the city of Plymouth. And we'll let you start out by introducing yourself to our wider audience and kind of direct some of the other to, ward, to, to the people in Plymouth. Thank you, Juanita. Thank you for this forum, mm -hmm. which I agree with George is very important to get out there to the people. I'm running for a council at large in Plymouth, and I'm an immigration attorney. Mm -hmm. And so in my daily life, uh -huh. I see a wonderful diversity of people come through my offices, many languages, many cultures, and I feel very, very lucky, very blessed to have that measure of contact with the outer world. Uh -huh. At one of, that inspired me to run for office. I'm a first time candidate for uh -huh. any office. And I'm running in Plymouth because I really love Plymouth. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time with my recreation in Plymouth. I kayak with my daughter uh -huh. on Medicine Lake. I hike on its trails. Mm -hmm. I enjoy its parks. Um, and my wife and I like to really immerse ourselves in what Plymouth has to offer. So I'm running for Plymouth City Council because even though Plymouth is a beautiful place, I find that it seems almost insular in some ways. Uh -huh. And so we've got a city council that has been in place for a good number of years. Uh -huh. And when openings come up on the city council, they tend to appoint people uh -huh. rather than elect people. Uh -huh. So it's the friends of the city council that become right. the new city council. They've had an opportunity, we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, citizen participation and whether that's an important thing. And this city council in Plymouth has actually disbanded a couple of very important uh -huh. uh, commissions. There uh -huh. was a commission on transit, uh, speaking of the blue line, right. uh, that was disbanded. There was a commission on human rights uh -huh. that was disbanded. And at the same time or in a similar time frame, the Northwest Ex Islamic Community Center relocated in oh, Plymouth right, right. at the same time as the Human Rights Commission was being <laughs> disbanded. So uh, I think that these are important communication tools that citizens have to both influence and to speak with their city council. Right. And one of the things that I, that I hope to do, should I be elected when I'm elected uh -huh. to city council, <laughs> is to work on restoring those commissions and perhaps others. Transit, of course, is a vital issue throughout the metro. Oh, definitely. Uh, when we are talking about having a light rail come in or even the medium rail uh, going out to St. Cloud and beyond, mm -hmm. we're really looking at who's going to be included and who's going to be excluded right. on these vital transportation corridors. Now, if you take Plymouth, turning its back on transit, that's Plymouth being excluded mm -hmm. from being considered in these important transit decisions. So I think that Plymouth really needs to do a better job of focusing on how its residents get places that they uh -huh. need to go and how other people who work in Plymouth get to Plymouth. Plymouth is the f seventh largest city right. in Minnesota. Right and the fourth largest economy in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So Plymouth is, euphemistically speaking, the California of uh -huh. Minnesota. <laughs> and just as California leads in some ways in automobile emission yeah. standards, in uh, renewable energy 
Plymouth has an opportunity to be a leader in these and other statewide areas. Mm -hmm. Another problem that Plymouth has right now is that Plymouth gets its water from aquifers. Now, okay. that's a good thing because that's those are those are places that the water has had time to percolate and become very clean. Right. But at the same time, it's also had time to marinate uh. in minerals <laughs> oh, right, for right. a thousand years. Right. So that water doesn't come out of the ground very tasty. Yeah. And Plymouth needs, I think, to consider whether or not the city needs to pull together to come up with some resolution for its distasteful okay but clean right water or whether they want to continue to push that down to the individual homeowner which i contend puts an unfair burden on some people who may be struggling with paying their rent True. or paying right. their mortgage that now they have to buy an entire system to soften their water to take the taste out mm -hmm. of their water so that's one issue that I think Plymouth really needs to contend with right. and one that they've taken for granted too long. Um, of course, uh, housing is always a concern right. and business is always a concern. Plymouth has put some money into affordable housing, okay. but I think the city council really needs to take a look at whether it's done enough. And when it comes to businesses locating in Plymouth, we're looking at what you might not say is a business flight yet, okay. but some big businesses like Polaris ah. and Sleep Number have pulled out of Plymouth ah. and relocated. Hmm. Uh, Ruby Tuesday is no longer there. So we've got definitely got some retail pressure going on in Plymouth that we need to take a look at. Right. And I think the city council is gonna play a vital role in the next four years in resolving these and other issues in Plymouth to make, make Plymouth even a better place to live. Plymouth is a wonderful place to live and I love it a lot, yeah. but I think we can do a better job. I think Plymouth can be a leader in Minnesota. I uh -huh. think it's definitely poised to be a leader among uh, cities because it is, it's 75,000 residents, right. make it a big, a big city and its very strong economic base makes it a powerhouse among oh, other right. Americans, other Minnesota cities. Right. Well, now I'd have you take a little time to tell the people out there in Plymouth, all of Plymouth, right? Mm -hmm. Why they should vote for you on November 6th. Absolutely. I bring to the table a diversity, a sense of diversity and a sense of leadership that I think Plymouth City Council needs at this time. I am an immigration attorney and I deal with people with the diversity of uh, all of Minnesota through my offices every day. I love Plymouth and I think Plymouth can be a better leader, a leader in water, a leader in clean energy, a leader in clean water, a leader in how to handle its parks. Plymouth can, can work on bringing more prairie plants into its park system in lower use areas in order to naturally filter and make the, the surface water and the groundwater even cleaner. Plymouth can do a better job with maintaining businesses that are in Plymouth. And Plymouth must reach out to its citizens and restore important councils and commissions that have been disbanded by this city council. Well, I wanna thank you very much. So we got the time to, <laughs> to give Tonya her full amount of time to talk out to the people in the central district in Brooklyn Park. Yeah. And I'll let you introduce yourself out to our wider audience and pointedly at the central district people. Hi, I, w I also wanted to say thank you because I think well, this is amazing to have an opportunity like this. Um, I'm Tanya West Hafner mm -hmm. and I, I'm a 20 year resident of Brooklyn uh -huh. Park. I'm also a first-time candidate for council or any elected office. Um, so we've lived in Brooklyn Park for the 20 years and raised oh. both of our kids there. I have two, two kids. One's 25 already and the other yeah. one's 18. Um, both graduated from Park Center High School. Um, but I've been very involved in the city for many, many years. Ah. Um, in 2006, um, I got on a task force that specifically looked at rental housing oh, right. um, and then moved into working get I got on the citizen long-range improvement committee which is now the, a commission um, 
and I was the chair of that for three, three years. Um, but during that time, out of that, we had a youth who was on the committee with us, oh. and he brought forth the idea of having listening to what the teens have to say. Right, right. And so they started Champions for Youth and um, Brooklyn Park Alliance for Youth. Uh -huh. And so my son was involved in that, so oh. I was involved in it too. I did a lot of summits to kind of hear what the kids had to say and and really got to the bottom of, of what they needed and right. what we needed. And I think, you know, the kids went out and did a restaurant map and, uh -huh. and all these other really cool things. Um, and then I got on planning commission um, and I was on planning commission for six years and the chair of planning commission for two of those years um, and then that just kind of led me into wanting to do more right right you know my kids are grown now obviously and so it, I just wanted to move to the next step I think with uh, being more involved in right. more of the decision making level um, of the of the city so yeah and then we'll talk a little bit about issues that you concerned about that you want people out there to know where you're coming from or what you think you might want to do about it yeah out with whatever issue you want to yeah I, I just wanted to echo George's George and I have been on the the CAC ah. <laughs> for Botno um, for he's been on a lot longer than I have uh -huh. but I've been on for a long time too so I've been patiently waiting I live right up by Target Corporation oh. now so potentially I could ride it to work yeah. into downtown I work for Hennepin County um, but I think you know, with that comes a lot of responsibility of development that might oh, be coming. Yes, yes. I mean, I think that could really enhance that whole area. You know, Target, the Target Corporation mm -hmm. owns quite a bit of that land that's north of 610. Right. Um, and that could really be an amazing um, place if we get the light rail. So I think I've, that's one of the big things that I know City Council really doesn't have a whole lot of right. say over that, but that's one of the things I'd love to see. And, and, and part of that, um, is is the development and making sure that we get high-end development and, mm -hmm. and that we're watching the development to be as inclusive as possible oh, and, right. and making sure that we're providing different opportunities housing and, and business opportunities for for all incomes and all households and all different ages right. and, you know that kind of thing it makes a very healthy housing stock if you are able to do that one of the other um, big things I'd like to see is us really focusing in on some of our public safety uh -huh. issues. I mean, I've, like I said, I've lived there for 20 years. Right. I've seen an amazing transformation of the city and our reputation, those things. And then you kind of start digging into some of the, of, right. the, of where there might be cracks and or things mm -hmm. that you need to fill up and not realizing that we have um, a whole fire station that isn't staffed. And so, you know, that might be something that we need to yeah. be thinking about. Yeah. Um, and making sure that all of our police and fire have what they need. And one of the other big issues that I thought was important is to make sure that we have, you know, our police are trained and have enough information about me dealing with mental health issues oh, as right, possible. Right. And um, making sure that our firefighters have the staff and, and equipment that they need to have too. Any other issues that are of concern or that maybe you've heard when you're door knocking and talking to people? Um, I think I think I told you that a little bit beforehand. Um, one of the things I keep hearing about is the school district um, and I keep telling people that I, you know, council really doesn't have a whole lot of say over the school district but I think we can you know create better potentially create better um, opportunities to collaborate and that kind oh, of thing sure. between the two organizations and making sure people know that Champlain Park High School is actually in Brooklyn Park. <laughs> we had talked about that before. Right. Um, I'm trying to think if there's other things. Um, is there anything that surprised you about the process of campaigning since you're a first-time campaigner? Yeah, or, I think. Or maybe kind of reflect on that a little because we're always asking people to get involved. Yes. So. Yeah, I, I, I think it was very scary at first and and I kind of said, are you sure you really, you, you, you really think I could do that? Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, you start tapping into the network that you've built right. over that 20 years that you've lived there and start realizing how many people know who you are right. and, and are willing to help you out. I have quite a few people dropping lit and doing things, uh, you know, helping you out with different, like, oh, you know, this is how you buy signs and this is how you do this. Right, and, right. You know, all those things that you don't really realize. I think I told you I, 
I was pretty happy that I didn't have a primary because yeah, I wasn't yeah. quite hitting the ground running at that mm -hmm. particular moment. Um, but I think it's definitely, it puts yourself out there and I think you just have to try to make the best of it and, and, um, and tap into those resources that you've built over that time. Sure. And then has anything, and the, if we have a little time we'll mention it, anything happened at the door that kind of surprised you or it was some, um, a lighter moment or it, it was something different? Because door knocking is a whole different thing than you've never done it before. It is, and it's, it's quite eye-opening. Um, I think, you know, one of the things you don't want to do is knock during Vikings games. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. That's definitely not something, that, uh, that's yeah. one, of, one of those tapping into my people right. that are in my network told me don't do it, don't mm -hmm. knock on the football players. <laughs> Um, but I think one of the things that I also realized is that people may not put themselves out there, um, but they want you to listen to them. Right, And they right. want to ask you those questions, and they want to see kind of how you're going to gonna approach different right. things. And then tell people in the Central District why they should vote for you come November 6th. Um, I think my passion for the city and the fact that I've lived there for 20 years um, and I've had opportunities to move, and we've mm -hmm. chosen not to do that. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's the main reason is just my passion for things. Right. And I think, I think, um, you know, I really bring what I think is a common sense approach uh -huh. to to answering difficult questions right. that we may have. Right. You know, I grew up. Um, in a big family, I have, I'm one of eight kids, and uh -huh. so I know how to budget. Uh -huh. <laughs> Learned that pretty, you know, quite a, early in your life, and making choices and, and decisions and prioritizing uh -huh. and, and those kinds of things. So I think I think bringing all of that experience, and then what I do for a living, you know, uh -huh. I work for Hennepin County, and I manage federal programs that help sure. community development and and create affordable housing. And I think those things are other things that I can bring uh -huh. to the table. For sure, and all okay. that well, I want to thank all three of you because I know your schedule is really busy <laughs> when you're campaigning, but we really appreciate your coming and sharing your thoughts and ideas with our viewers out there. And then we keep wanting to ensure our viewers are checking if they're registered to vote. Uh, last week we gave you some a lot of information about the Secretary of State's office. It's one that you can tune into if you're not sure if you're registered or you can register there. But there are lots of places to get information about candidates. Of course, our show is one and Channel 12 is, or they're not 12 anymore, I guess. But CCX is another one, League of Women Voters, the local newspapers, the citywide newspapers. There's lots of places to get information. So we encourage you to be sure to watch our program next week for some more candidates, but be sure to take the time to gather some information so when November 6th is getting closer, you'll have something that you will vote about because you're concerned. It's an issue that will, when you vote for the person, it'll help you out. We're glad that you've been with us and we encourage you to come back. Bye. <laughs>